it finally happened for the Magic. The basketball gods finally showed them some favor in the draft lottery. They were blessed with some outstanding luck when they first became a franchise, getting the number one pick at both the 92 and 93 draft. But it seems like they have been paying for that luck ever since. It always felt like the Magic were just on the outside looking in regarding the draft. If it was a three-player draft and then a drop-off, the Magic picked fourth. If there were five good players, they picked sixth. So it felt good to see them finally have some luck come draft time. It will be a lot of fun to watch another number one overall pick, big guy, have a few good years with them, and then ultimately leave for Los Angeles. All jokes aside, I think the Magic made the right decision in taking Paolo Boncaro, even if they took a really weird path to select him. Boncaro was number one on my board, and I will link the case for that in the description. But just to summarize real quickly, Boncaro ha just has insane playmaking upside with a deep scoring bag. And out of the top three from this past year's draft, he is the most likely to be able to correct his deficiencies. As for the weird part, it did sound like pa Paolo had very little interest in going to Orlando, which is part of the reason we didn't know that he was going number one until a few hours before the draft. But the other reason we didn't know was that Orlando gave us no indication that they were drafting him or even considered dr considering drafting him. They didn't bring him in for an interview or a workout, which seems really odd to say the least. I guess they decided that they were going for him at number one with 100% certainty. So an interview and a workout wouldn't have likely changed their mind. So maybe the plan was to try to get Oklahoma City to panic and trade up to guarantee that they can draft Chet. But it still just seems really odd to me the way that they played this. So it's going to be a dynamic to keep an eye on going forward. As for the Magic's aspirations for this upcoming season, spoiler alert, it won't include a title. But even having said that, there's still plenty here to get excited about if you're an Orlando fan. And even if you aren't, this is going to be a really fun league pass team. This is a, a really fun group. They're young. They've got some intriguing pieces outside of Paolo Boncaro. And for those returning pieces, kind of the top of my list is going to be this backcourt. Cole Anthony has sort of been the de facto franchise player the last few seasons, and that just isn't who he is as a player. He's put up solid numbers at, so far, but it's come at the cost of some pretty alarming efficiency. So now with more talent around him, can he take a step back and Will those efficiency numbers improve as a result, or is he just destined to be this good stats, bad team guy, sort of like D'Angelo Russell? His backcourt mate, Jalen Suggs, entered the league with really high expectations, but at least thus far hasn't lived up to them. I, I noted entering last season, I noticed at Gonzaga, he had a lot of trouble beating NBA-level athletes off the dribble during his time in college, and so far that's pretty much exactly what's played out. So while I've given up on him becoming an all-NBA type player, I still think he can be a really solid player in this league. He dealt with a ton of injuries in his first season, so hopefully he can put those behind him and we can see what he can really do. In the front court, Franz Wagner, probably one of the biggest surprises from last year's draft, just a really solid player. He does a bit of everything, but most importantly, he's shown flashes as a shot creator and a playmaker, a lot like Bancaro. So for the Magic to potentially have two guys that are in that 6'9", 6'10", range that are able to generate their own looks and shots for others, that could be really special. Also, presumably, they're getting Jonathan Isaac back at some point. And I think the minute he shows himself to be useful at all, if he is even able to do so at this stage, I, I'm... I would be fairly confident he would be getting shipped out. I just don't see where he fits in with this roster. I guess if you held on to him, he could potentially be a pretty good complement to Boncaro as more of a defensive-oriented big wing option. But if you're Orlando, getting rid of him is almost like burning sage. Both parties have had just terrible luck with one another, so it's time for both of them to have a fresh start. Bigs-wise, you have Wendell Carter Jr., who's – Low-key been kind of climbing the ranks for most underrated player in the league, and they also bring back Mo Bamba. 
And ten million a year might seem like a steep price for Mo Bamba, but it's only guaranteed for this season. So it's a pretty low risk, potentially high reward if he can finally figure it out. So lots of intrigue and plenty of young players to get excited about if you're a, an Orlando fan. And if you're a betting man, this isn't a bad place to look. As of recording this, Orlando is currently at an over-under of 25.5, which, according to DraftKings, makes them the fourth-worst team in the league. And even though they only managed to win 22 games last season, I'm taking the over on this. This is not the fourth-worst team in the league. They have sort of under the radar been stockpiling some really young, talented players. And down the stretch of last season, once they got healthy, they started to look pretty good. They were seventh in defensive rating last year after the All-Star break. So it's a pretty damn good defensive team. And with all the big athletes that they have, that should really come as no surprise. So with another year of development and adding a blue chip talent and a player like Paolo Boncaro, I actually wouldn't be totally shocked to see this team get to the low 30s for wins next season.